Um, Jason Turpin, Hulk Hogan's definition of worker. Hulk Hogan is running wild in the mailbag this week, boys. Bubba the Love Sponge has started to release a bunch of his old Hulk Hogan interviews on YouTube. And one of them, Hulk rank, ranks his top five wrestlers. Bubba the Nickers were. Hulk is a very defin- very interesting definition of worker. Uh, pull the clip up, Joe, because it's only 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. Under Hulk... Uh, hang on. This here. Under Hulk's definition... Uh, what do you think was the best work at WCW? And thanks, that's from Jason Turpin. Okay, you ready to play this show? Because you're not a, you're not the top five hell of a hands. I promise you that. Yeah, but workers is too. See, all the marks get all upset when I talk about this because workers they think worker is the guy that can do the best wrestling moves and you know can do the spots and do the bumps and all the stupid Shawn Michaels stuff. You know, worker to me is a guy that worked the crowd and made everybody the most money. All right, so then let's do this then, okay? Worker to you is not a guy that can do, you know, 35 high spots in 15 minutes. Worker to you is a guy that can draw, that can cut a promo. That yeah, can be this ma- business is about making money All right. and, and making so the me- most money and, and, and get, making the most money for your family right. and what, whoever you're taking care of. That's All right, well, then how right. the hell... That's enough, you- That's enough Joe. Uh, the, based on that, the best worker was Goldberg. Because he had people in, in a time when most of the fans knew it was a work, he had people thinking it was real. And he got huge pops and he drew. So, like, you know, it's not the definition of worker that we think, but but by Hulk's definition, Goldberg was the best worker. Would you agree that, Conan? Well, if it's by Hulk's definition, then it would be Austin. Mm-hmm. Made the well, the guy asked it in WCW. WCW, WCW was a question, though. Oh, oh in WCW? Yeah, who would you yeah say? probably Goldberg or, right. or Flair. Yeah. Hogan, Piper. Well, Hogan was answering the, the – he's just, you know, it was he, didn't, he didn't count? Okay. Yeah, I would, say, I, would say, I would say Goldberg just because he, you know, he drew. Like, there's, there's no doubt about that. He was yeah, a, that's why I would say there, Goldberg there was, or like Flair. Like I said, he had, a, he had a different crowd reaction than other wrestlers at the time. It was called the Goldberg pop. It was just different, you know? So did Flair. Flair yeah. could – like yeah. you said, he could work the mic. He drew people. And then, and then to add on all of that, he was a great in-ring worker. Yeah, yeah. All right, next one, Corey Springer, and the subject is K Dog and Di. What's good, K One Hundred Crew? Been a listener since two thousand seventeen, and it's my first mailbag submission. Y'all, my favorite wrestling podcast. My first question for Disco: Recently, I've been diagnosed with disco fever, disco fever, disco fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been using Blue Chew for the symptoms, but want to know if you have any suggestions. Thanks. <sighs> Next question. When did Conan and Disco first become boys? Was it before or after 1999? There's a few matches of you two face each other on YouTube. And do you have any funny stories between the two of you when you first started hanging out? Thanks, and Conan, I hope your health continues to improve, and I appreciate all you, all you all do for the K100 listeners. That's from Corey S. from Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm not going to answer the Disco question about the Blue Chew. I'm going to suspend you a week for that because it's a failed attempt at comedy. Dang. Uh, so congratulations on your first submission. You get suspended. What are you mad um, about, Joe? What, Corey Springer? No, nah, nothing. When did Conan... Uh, when, when did we first start hanging out, Conan? The first year I was in WC... Well, were we... I don't know. We, well, I don't like, think we were hanging out. In, but, uh, right. How, when did we start like, start going clubbing and everything and start driving together? I, I can't... Really, like I said, I can't remember. Right. Like, we spent so much time together. Like, I don't know where it started, you know? I just know we all we would go out. I think maybe it might have been some of those Disney trips when we'd all go to the the, the yeah the uh, residence the disco and the re- you know and we'd all kind of like yeah probably fight. it we was very early free on. time yeah 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 probably one of those. Um, next is from uh, so make sure you suspend that guy too, Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, next Corey is Springer, Forrester Grillo, and the subject is Marks. I'm sure you guys have have all seen it by now. By now, but for those who haven't, last week a video was going around of Rey Mysterio more or less being stalked and harassed by a group of marks in an airport. And then when he dared to do something evil, like catch his flight so that he can go wrestle. What a... Right? So the marks then made a video about how Rey Mysterio doesn't care about his fans. Uh, Five fat... The question I have for you guys is, have you ever had to deal with something like this? What do you think about Rey's reaction to them, and have you ever smacked a fan for crossing the line? Uh, more Conan's dogs, less Billy. Right, whatever. <laughs> what about a? Uh, um, did you see that video, Conan? No. Joe, try to pull that up. Yeah. 
Bro, it's like these these fans. You know, like when when you uh come to the airport. Bro, it's happened to all of us. It's happened to all of us. But these guys like got it, came up on him, and they all had like just a montage of like like a a, a freaking gimmick table worth of stuff for him to sign. And he was like, dude, you, you know, <laughs> it's like they're being kind of very very pushy. You know, you got you got the video, Joe. Uh, yep. All right. Um, yeah, but it happens to everybody. But like some of the fans are too, uh, they're, they're just brutal, you know? I mean, seriously. I mean, I don't know how to, you know, Jackie was cool because he was like friendly with us and come to the bar and, you know, but like some of these other ones are just, I don't know what they're thinking, you know? I don't know. Uh, they just think I'm a fan, you're a wrestler, and you got to do what I want or what I say, right. or I'm going to bury you, especially now in this day. But what's weird to me is if you're asking for Rey Mysterio's autograph, and there's five of you, I'm assuming you guys have been following him for a long time, and you can tell just by his interviews, like, you know, not the ones in the ring, but outside of the ring, that he's the, the coolest guy you're ever going to meet. That's why, to me, when I read people talking bad about Ray, and I've read a lot, I'm like, what a bunch of this is the coolest guy you could ever, ever, ever meet with the biggest heart, and you're bearing him. You're a. F- Let me tell you this too. There's, there's, a, there's two diff. There's a difference, okay? There is autograph seekers, and then there's professional autograph seekers. A professional autograph seeker will, like, if you're coming to town, they say, "Hey, would you mind coming to my hotel room and signing some stuff? <clears throat> I'll give you this much money, okay?" And then there's the unprofessional autograph seekers that just could get right up on you and they want you to sign a stack of stuff. Right. And nothing, they might be, you know? and they might be selling so, it and you're not even getting a cut. Right. So the thing, okay, if we're not nice to the unprofessional autograph seekers, dude, my, my advice to you become professional, set up, you know, b- book an appointment. Like, you know, like you contact me and say, Hey, when you come in town, I'll give you this much. like, you know, to, to come sign some stuff. But if you want to be unprofessional, just get up all, all, all it, you know, invade everybody's space and have them sign a bunch of stuff that you're going to profit off of that nobody else is. It's like, don't, don't expect the same treatment as the professionals. Would that be a good way to. Yeah. That's a good idea. Let me see this, Joe. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I'm signing for you guys to make money. We appreciate it. I've been a fan since I was a little kid, man. Well, I, I actually am a fan. Back in the 80s, That's why I'll sign oh, I'm a huge fan, man. <laughs> I saw one for you. It's like, yeah, so you want to go outside sign one? Yeah. Like, what, well, they, they, they post this, like, they try to post this, like, Ray was the bad guy here. Right. One of those guys was a fraud. <laughs> was. One of those guys was a fraud anyway, because he said something about how I was watching you in the 80s. Ray wasn't around until the mid 90s. Right, yeah. In, in states, anyway. <laughs> We are fans. Do you love the way the guy said we are fans? Yeah. Maybe he was watching him surf in San Diego in the 80s. Oh All right. Next one's from um, uh, Don Keek on the subject is Khan versus Soraya. Conan, I think it was you who said on the show that people getting buried on TV is 99.99% due to backstage heat. So gotta uh, ask I you never said 99.9% right. due to backstage heat. That's incredible. So it might be backstage heat. So I got to ask you about the booking of Soraya. I mean, it's just been total, utter, uncut. I've heard in the past that she can be tough to deal with. Do you think that it's possible that Tony Khan is booking her so badly because of backstage heat? Or maybe just because Tony Khan is so talentless in booking? Soraya's forced retirement, return to the ring, should have been a huge deal. Yet it turned out to be an even bigger dud than Lacey Evans' latest run. Joe, tell Hughie to set his WATP contacts after Billy. I want to see that meltdown. Hmm. What is WATP? He- he- that's uh, who are these podcasts? It's like a parody show, makes fun of other shows. Yeah, basically. And I'd like a get my go. Yeah, but more, more, He's much more. Already successful. done that, so too late. Um, um I have no clue what the booking, the, 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 whether there's heat or the. Well, heat, so. the thing um, is, is that. If you think that he's doing it because she has heat, then a lot of people must have heat. Because tell me what has been booked very well. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? That 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 seems to be a big a big problem there. I th- I think I you know I'll be honest with you. I don't I don't know if Tony <clears throat> picks up. I the, does Tony. I, I mean I don't know his booking stuff. Like I've heard he has this. He charts everything out, and he was talking about he inverted the charts. Like, I don't right. I don't know if he just says. Has like all his booking plan like when Joe when those old booking games mm-hmm. 
Well, how were they predicated? Because that's that's what he used to do, right? Those those booking games. Yeah, it was what predicated you- on uh, star ratings in the matches and attendance and buy rates. And are you, you serious? Know, it was pretty well involved. Yeah, the games are pretty involved. But, but would you book like long term? Is that the way? Yeah, it was you, designed? yeah. You book okay. storylines and then you book your matches so, and angles. Okay, to push so, storylines further. Yeah. So the, obviously, to me, it looks like that's what Tony does. He books everything out months in advance, and he never adjusts. Based on organic developments that happen, like you know, like in the middle of angles and stuff, everything. Yeah, because I wouldn't be surprised like, if he actually took his ideas and his card and ran them through the game to see what the game said. I, that's just really my, just my take, though. Yeah, interesting. But but I no no like star ratings were actually a thing that, that was factored in. Yeah, if you wanted to play that way, yeah. Oh my god. Well, I just think that Tony's main <laughs> problems funny. are he's booking by himself. For a company with over 200 wrestlers. And five know, shows now. Right. And five shows. Okay. Including the Jericho Cruise. Nothing. <laughs> and um, and then the... And, you know, he's still a novice, bro. He's been doing this for three years. I can't understand how anybody in three years, even if you have been a lifelong fan, would know all the nuances and all the tricks. and Because there's no substitute for the experience. This is not an easy job. Sounds easy. Anybody can say, oh, well, why don't you put this guy against this guy? Why don't you put this guy against this guy? Well, you're dealing with a lot of egos. You're dealing with people that are, you know, get injured. You're dealing with people that don't like each other. You're dealing with a lot of variables that you don't even know about, you know? And a lot of the wrestlers are marks for themselves. It's a lot of... But anyways, um, so, you know, he's got a lot on his plate. And, you know, I think he suffers from not having help. 